Hello, my name is Sally Ann Lynch. I am a consultant in clinical genetics and an honorary senior lecturer at University College Dublin. Now I'm going to go through a practical demonstration to show you how to draw up a family tree in your surgery. Step one, put in your patient. I have used a circle to indicate that your patient is a female. Step two, does she have a partner? If so, add in her partner. Step three, do they have any children? I have shown that they have two boys and a girl. Step four, ask about how many brothers and sisters your patient has and about her parents. And also add in how many brothers and sisters her partner has and his parents. Now you have drawn a three generation family tree, which is the gold standard in clinical genetics. The next step depends on what your patient is worried about in her family. We have drawn a large family tree. Your patient has three sisters and one brother and her mother has now been diagnosed with breast cancer. You need to now draw in the brothers and sisters of her mother, her grandparents and also the siblings of her grandparents. You need to ask whether any of her mother's sisters have also had breast cancer or a related cancer such as ovarian cancer. You need to also ask about whether her grandmother had breast or ovarian cancer and also whether any of her grandmother's sisters or her grandfather's sisters had breast cancer. You need to remember that males can carry the breast cancer gene and whilst they won't manifest it, you need to ask about family history on the male side as well as on the female side. In the next step, we have the same family tree, but your patient, who has three sisters and a brother, comes to you worried because her brother has suddenly died from SADS. You need to ask questions in the family about a history of fainting in either herself or any of her siblings, children or parents' generation. You need to ask about whether any of her relatives have died young from a heart attack or drowning or whether there's any history of epilepsy. It's also worth noting the time of day of the sudden adult death as some cardiac genetic conditions can be triggered by alarm clocks. Collect the details of the affected individual, such as their name, their date of birth and the hospital where the post-mortem was done. In this next step, we have the same family tree, but your patient has come to you because she's worried that her brother has intellectual disability. In this family tree, you need to find out about whether the affected individual is a male or female. How is your patient related to the affected individual? Was there a history of miscarriages in herself or in her mother's generation? This might suggest that the family is at risk of a chromosomal translocation. You also need to ask whether anyone else in the family has intellectual disability. Remember to check through the female line for additional affected males. In the next step, your patient has come to you because she's worried that her niece or nephew has a disorder. You will see in this family tree here that your patient's sister has a son who is affected by a genetic disorder. If she is worried about her risks, you need to find out what is the diagnosis. If it's not known, but your patient thinks it's something genetic, collect details such as what are the features the child has presented with, what is the name and date of birth of the child, what hospital does the child attend, what are the child's problems, and if the child is deceased, what was the date of the death of the child?